Welcome to Heaven Awaits. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. Get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's dive into today's experience. My first encounter with angels was in mid-summer of 1961 when I was 13 years old. It happened during my near-death experience in a public swimming pool in Israel. About a year and a half later, in December 1962, I began my out-of-body travel at will. Coming from a scientific, atheistic background and being a student in a marine boarding high school with military discipline, and later serving as a soldier and then as an officer of the Israeli Defense Force, and as a senior sea officer in the Merchant Marines, I didn't dare to disclose my out-of-body communications for many years. It all started on a hot summer day in the public swimming pool that belonged to my uncle. Having free admission, I was one of the luckiest kids who used to visit the place almost every single day during the hot, humid summer of Israel. Being an active teenager and a good diver and swimmer, I had a bet with a professional diver that I could swim under the water three times the width of the pool with one breath. The bet was over a pair of flippers. I won but not before being pronounced clinically dead. I remember how at some point during that painful struggle under the water, the winning suddenly became immaterial. I just hoped that I was still swimming toward the end to touch the side of the pool, but gradually I became indifferent. I felt like I was dreaming, while I slowly continued to swim, or at least I thought so while entering into a strange, deep, unconscious sleep. Then, all of a sudden, something amazing happened. I became very alert and refreshed, feeling as if I were vacuumed upward with great velocity. I was astonished. It all happened so rapidly. I felt like I was flying at an enormous speed through a long and dark pipe that was also soft and secure. It didn't have real sides, but at the end of the pipe, I could see a bright light. Next, I found myself out there, in the air, but in a unique position. I was floating about 20 feet above the swimming pool. I had no fear of falling, and couldn't feel my weight at all. Although it was a very hot, humid day, it felt different now, very pleasant. Everything looked brighter but soft. I could see the horizon clearly as if some curtains were lifted. Then. Looking down was incredible. I saw my body lying there on the slab near the edge of the pool surrounded by people who kept running from all over, while the lifeguard, a big woman, had started giving me mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing and pressing on my chest region. I suddenly could hear their thoughts and feelings. Hey guys, nothing happened to me, I called out happily, but none of them looked in my direction. After a few seconds, I noticed a huge and powerful being who was floating by my side. He was about nine or ten feet tall. I could feel his enormous, powerful radiation of energy, and yet he was not scary at all, more like a big father with a lot of love and care for me. He was shining as if he were illuminated from within. Observing him, I realized that he was made out of the light. Then, all of a sudden, he commanded with a loving voice, You must go back. It is not your time yet. There are many duties you must complete. You will be back here in due time. Now prepare yourself to go back. I refused. I wanted to stay there. The feeling was so good up in the air that I couldn't even imagine going down. By now, I had also become aware of light, soft music. It was a type of soft sound in the air, one which didn't interrupt my ability to listen to that huge being made out of an illuminated cloud, which eventually I realized was one of the powerful angels of the divine. You must go down. It is not your time yet. He continued, you must return to your body. Suddenly he got serious. Somehow I understood that I had to go back. I looked down. The lifeguard was still working hard, now together with a person whom I didn't know. Later on I found out that he was a doctor from a nearby hospital who had come to swim that day. They were applying CPR on my body. I felt their anxiety, especially that of the lifeguard who liked me very much and used to call me fish boy. Next, looking toward the sun, I noticed the world was filled with a bright light in addition to that of the sunlight. I wanted to see more, but then, despite my resistance, I suddenly felt as if I were vacuumed down, falling rapidly back into my body. Soon I was rushed in an ambulance to Tel Hashomer Hospital in the city of Ramat Gan for a complete checkup. 
Getting out of my body was the most important thing I truly wanted to do after that incident. As a young boy, I took the angel's words, you will be back here in due time as a promise. Every night I asked for his help to direct me on how to get up there. I longed for that experience of floating freely in the air. That wish for freedom and the desire to see the world led me to join a tough marine boarding high school. For two years I prayed for the help of that angel to help me get out of my body, but nothing happened. Then, one cold evening in December after a long day of school studies and physical training at the marine boarding school, I decided to take a nap while my roommates went out to the school club. I was just about to close my eyes when all of a sudden, in the darkness, I noticed that the room was changing in colors as if it became full of lights. I kept lying down with my eyes wide open, witnessing the strange phenomenon. The center of the light grew denser as if a heavy cloud was molded in it. I felt paralyzed, glued to my bed. My heart was pumping fast as I held my breath. Soon radiation of endless love and joy filled my entire body. The angel was there looking at me. Did you come to take me with you? I asked him. No, it is not yet your time. You have a lot of work to do here. Your destiny demands much more, he said. I came here to fulfill your dream. It is time for you to learn how to get out of your body, simply using your own will, he continued. Next, he instructed me step by step on how to get ready to leave my body. Suddenly, he told me to give him my hand. That night, I was especially exhausted, but I carefully followed his instructions and gave him my hand. It was not the physical hand I realized soon. It parted from my physical being. All of a sudden, I was completely out of my body, feeling so awake, alert, refreshed, and joyful. That night was the beginning of many nights of adventures and learning from angels in the out-of-body realm. I used to leave my body after the lights went off in the dormitory. Looking down, I saw my roommates sound asleep, including my own body. Of course, I didn't dare mention my out-of-body journeys. I was sure that although I was one of the best students in the marine boarding school, they would throw me out of school if I should mention even a bit of it. My spiritual learning was done telepathically in a series of lectures with the angel Lamdiel while I was out of my body, floating and absorbing the angel's words. First, I had to volunteer to help others. I was only 15 at that time, but I did. The learning included information about other lives in the universe, the origin of humanity on Earth, the inner reality of matter, speeds, and energy, and lots of data that highlighted or completely contradicted what I was learning at my school in science. But one of the most exciting events was when the angel told me about the future of humanity. Today I have a very important message for you, he said. In a flash, we were high in space. Looking down, a great excitement went through my whole soul. A blue planet was down there, planet Earth. Soaked with feelings of love, I just kept looking down, absorbing the scene into my soul. I will never forget those moments. The following is a true message given by Lamdiel, the angel of the divine. You, the human species on Earth, have come a long way in your evolutionary process, and soon you are going to enter into a new era in your lives, which is the next and the major step in your evolutionary process. I have already taught you about the concept of advanced life forms, such as a human being which is, in reality, a compound of life inside life. Each time a more advanced new life form emerges from the unification of the previous ones, let's explore it in more detail. It is important because understanding this concept will help you grasp the destiny of humanity. You know that a human being is a compounded group of lives. It is built of smaller particles or smaller life forms which are your body cells. This is not the end of the story. Your body's cells are also made of smaller particles that are also alive. They aren't considered alive by your scientists. Nevertheless, they have their simpler life forms. You know them as the proteins and amino acids, which again are made from simpler life forms. They are called by your scientists, molecules. These life forms are arranged in a specific code, creating the proteins and the living cells of your body that, in turn, create the human body. Again, David, this is not the beginning of the compounded life form. These molecules are made from smaller particles as well, the atoms. Within the physical level on Earth, the atoms are considered by your scientists as the smallest foundation or the complete basis of all the physical matter. The living aspects of the atom are being ignored, but in a much simpler form, 
the atoms have their own tiny living spirits within themselves. In reality, the atoms' spirits aren't the beginning of the story. As you remember from the previous lessons, each atom is made of many subatoms 7, which are made from subatom 6 and so on, all the way down to subatoms 1. Each subatom 1, together with the pure living units in the infinite level, is the basic foundation of matter and life in the universe. If you followed the compounded structure of lives inside lives, you probably noticed that a single person is by now is one of the most advanced complexes of life on Earth. Is it the end of the evolution story? A human being on Earth is not the end of the grouping system. The coming step in the evolutionary process is one of the most amazing ones. Similar to your body's cells, the entire human population on Earth is going to form the next group as a compound new life. Through the unification of all humans on planet Earth, a new giant life form holding a much bigger spirit within the souls of humans is going to emerge. Similar to the energy links between the cells in your body, besides the physical and chemical connections between your cells, there are unseen energy links among all human beings, even between today's enemies. The links that connect each one of you to the others are much stronger than the individual's needs or even the individual's life. Therefore, these unseen energy links affect every person on Earth, whether one is aware of them or not. All over planet Earth, a growing number of humans are in a constant search for meaning in life, fulfilling a major sensation of spiritual emptiness within the self. The emptiness within people's souls is forcing them to fill it somehow with spiritual or metaphysical activity. This is partly the reason why people are forming or are devoted to religions and cults. This emptiness in the human souls is also the factor that will force them to bond with each other further. It is not going to be a physical bonding process like the cells in your body, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, a fact that will lead to a main evolutionary event on Earth. Right now, humanity is in the process of bonding more strongly, each human to the others. It is done in unseen ways, but sensitive individuals can sense its effect all over the planet, especially in the strong emerging collective superconscious mind, which is going to be much stronger shortly. Also, the new growing technology affects humanity much more than you can assume initially. It is going to affect you consciously and subconsciously. Consciously, through advanced communication and computerized technology, and subconsciously through the growth of unseen radio, TV, and other wave transmissions, which are energy links among all people on Earth, thus creating enormous net-like energy around the planet Earth, bonding even further all humanity into a single subconscious and superconscious mind. This stage is the prerequisite for the next major evolutionary step. Your planet is alive. The planet and each of the life forms on it have their spirits. Earth is in constant communication with your souls. Your evolution is also the evolution of the planet. The living species on Earth represent its living evolution, but the most advanced life forms on it are human beings. They represent the more advanced functions of the planet, similar to the cells of the nervous system that are the most developed in your body, the ones that are the sites of bonding with a higher soul, the human soul. This process is similar to the way that the souls of cells united themselves and advanced into the next step of evolution to continue and grow as a part of a bigger life form that they had created, which is a plant, an animal, or a human. Next, the new united or energy-bonded humans, who are the most mentally evolved life forms on planet Earth, will make a further step in the filling of the space in their souls. They are going to bond themselves to a much bigger spirit, which is going to bond with all the souls of the people on Earth, similarly to your soul bonding itself with the little souls of the nerve cells in your body. The new, enormous, giant spirit will coordinate all human lives in the new complex of humanity bonded together. This spirit will help humanity to evolve farther into higher frontiers in the universe. It is the real evolutionary step that many planets in the universe, which have gone through similar evolutionary advancements, are waiting for to communicate with you. This process might seem strange, but remember how your own body did the same. Your living cells, when you were very young, as an embryo of a few weeks, were craving for a bigger soul, which is your soul, to bond with them, to bring higher life into their lives. They needed your soul to help the tiny cells fulfill their own evolutionary needs. 
These needs are, in reality, imprinted in every subatom and every living unit of their spirits. Your cells made a major step in the evolutionary process. They bonded with a bigger soul. They bonded with your soul to create you, a much more advanced life form than each one of them separately. That process enriched the cells' lives tremendously. Their lives completely changed. They became stronger, enlightened, and full of love and satisfaction. They became part of a bigger life form with a bigger soul that filled the emptiness in their tiny souls. They made a major step in the process of evolution that is part of the unification of the entire life in the universe. You, the entire humanity, are going to proceed with it. After the unification process with each other, you humans on Earth are going to make the main evolutionary step, the ultimate one as individual humans. You are going to bond with a greater, enormous spirit. I was excited. Who is that giant spirit? I felt as if my heart were racing although I was in my astral body. The angel smiled, then slowly answered my question. It is going to be a strong, huge, high-intensity spirit from the third level of existence, from the forces level. That spirit is going to bond himself with all of humanity on the planet Earth. It will create a huge new entity, one that will improve your lives tremendously and forever. This huge spirit is quite well known to humanity on Earth. Many people, unknowingly, already are craving to bond with him. They consciously pray for his help and love him. In some part of their subconscious minds, all people on Earth already know it. And whether they believe in any established religion or not, in times of great need, most humans recognize his existence. They call him God, Elohim, Yahweh, Allah, the Heavenly Father, and many other names. Well guys, that does it for David's story. Let me know what you thought about his lessons with Lamdiel. Do you feel as if we are on a path of spiritual evolution? Until next time, stay safe and continue to be blessed.